Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers, something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tennis Ace K's Path. So let's go ahead and pick right where we left off with uh, June causing problems in the classroom as he is wont to do. But yeah, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining. Let's jump right in. Alarm saying you're up and let's go. <clears throat> he gets really pissed. <clears throat> in 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I got the first like 30 seconds of a video. Don't cuss or have any kind of horrible stuff going on. All right, but he gets really pissed off if you try to stop him from giving classes on that subject. D did I say something wrong? June leans over to me and whispers, Everything you said there was wrong. Is he always like this? You should have seen him during last year's Chinese history fiasco. I think Kumagawa still has the scars from where that whip hit him. You're joking, right? Sure. Kobayashi? Yes? Quah, Shima Sensei looks super pissed off. Maybe you shouldn't be watching this class. You obviously already know so much of the subject that you feel comfortable enough to not pay attention. But no. You know what? How about a little test? I'm sure this one will be really easy for you since you obviously already know so much. Answer me this. Where do the gods of the Greek pantheon reside? Uh, uh... June is stuttering, unable to respond. He shoots me a pleading look. The teacher isn't really looking at me right now. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it did it. Shima Sensei f face goes slack, staring at the tiger with a look of complete shock. Then he, cra then he cracks a content smile, seemingly incredibly pleased at this turn of events. What a pleasant surprise. I suppose there is hope for you after all. But thank you. Shima Sensei makes a small reverence to June and restarts his lecture. And thank you. You're welcome. Alright, but that still doesn't mean you get away with not paying attention. Cut the chatter, you two. Yes, sir. Y yes, sir. Thank God, it's already lunch break. Sheesh, spacing out like that is not okay. I should try being a little more attentive from now on. Nah. All right, class, I want you all to review some of what I've explained to you because this will certainly be part of our midterms. Just make sure you study and you should all do well. Shima Sensei walks out of the class as the students start getting up. Some people start leaving the class whilst others just sit and chat, bringing out their lunch boxes. We're finally able to have a. We're finally back to having a cool, relaxed atmosphere. Hey, Yuichi san, mind if we eat together? You seriously don't need to ask that every time. Sure, take a seat. I think Sai and Shuichi should arrive in a bit. As if they were on cue, the door to our class was violently opened by a super high strung Sai as she and Shuichi walk inside. Yo! Yo! Ah, I survived! Sai plops herself down on a chair without bothering to say anything else, immediately slouching on our desk. A rough day? Saya nods, her head buried in her arms. As Shuichi pulls up a chair to sit down, she lets out a guttural groan. Really? Really rough day, then. Saya looks up at us with sadness. I was late to the class this morning, and Katsuragi, and Katsuragi sensei she chewed me out. She forced me to stand outside of class holding two buckets full of water. Who even does that anyway? What is this, a shonen manga? Well, she is very old-fashioned, so I'm not really surprised. But what happened today? You tend to always be on time. That's, like, the only good thing about you. Watch it, Arata! Saya leers at Shuichi, making him grin. <laughs> it seems this is exactly the reaction he was hoping to get out of her. I got into some trouble on my way to school and got held up. Where? In, in the police station. You got held up at a police station and the first thing you mentioned was being late to class? I don't want to remember it, okay? Saya buries her face in her arms again and groans another time. By this point, Saya has already been so loud that everyone in the surrounding air surrounding seats is staring at us. Class rep walks up to us to check on the source of the commotion. Hey, Saya-chan, boy troubles? I can get Kyoko if you want. She smiles warmly at Saya, who merely looks up with downcast eyes. No, no, I wish it were boy troubles. Mrs. Gucci-san got in trouble with the police. She nearly jumps up from her seat. Hey, Kobayashi-kun! What? June seems to be completely oblivious to what just happened. My, my, in trouble with the police, Saya-chan? What did you do? The class rep was all that bothered by it. She didn't show the smallest trace of it. Instead, her eyes betrayed nothing. Ugh, foxes. I can never read them. It's stupid. I, I might have broken someone's phone. Wow. Even Shuichi's taken aback by her sudden confession. My, my, it's very violent, even for you, Saya-chan. Yeah, well, it was a misunderstanding. Care to... Care to walk us through what happened? Well... Saya glances over towards us, as if expecting for one of us to interject and change the subject. When none of us does, she sighs. 
I took the train to school like I usually do every morning. I ended up sitting in front of a boy from another school and an old man. I was just minding my business, listening to some music on my phone when I thought I heard the sound of a camera. I looked around and saw him holding up his phone. I thought he was taking pictures of me and... Wait, wait, wait. Who did you see holding up the phone, the boy or the old guy? What difference does it make? Well, if it was a kid taking pictures of you, the best you could do is ask for his school, ask for his school to take disciplinary action. If it was an adult, on the other hand, you could file charges against. Saya seems to ponder on this for a few seconds before sighing once more. Well, none of it matters anyway. I took the phone out of his hand and smashed it on the floor. He got really pissed. Wait, who got really... The boy! June cowers in his chair. Saya clears her throat. Anyway, he called the police once we stopped at the next station, and we got taken to the police department where they questioned me about it. I explained what happened, and they called my mother, saying I couldn't just destroy personal property willy-nilly. Wow, and they didn't say anything about Tim taking pictures of you? Well... I have a bad feeling about this. Turns out he wasn't taking pictures of me. His phone didn't even have a camera. I knew it. <laughs> it seems that this story was too much for Shuichi to take as he explodes in a fit of thunderous laughter. June and class rep both pat her on the back, trying to reassure her. That was an honest mistake, Saya-chan. Just tr try not to jump to conclusions next time. I had to give him a new phone. My mom was pissed. She'll take my next paycheck to cover the cost of the phone as punishment. It's not fair! My paycheck is twice the price of that shitty phone! You seem to care more about your paycheck than you do his phone. Well, why should I have to buy him a new phone? Because you broke his. That's his fault for taking pictures of me. Except he didn't. Yeah! You can give Sai a short pat on the shoulder. Well, I guess nothing terribly bad happened then. If you'll excuse me, Kyoko is giving me the evil eye for ditching her to come over. See ya! Thank you, Aya-chan. Ayako nods, smiling. She wasn't kidding. Kyoko really is glaring at us. The girl can be really scary when she's annoyed. Sometimes I wish I had a female best friend. Saya sighs, resting her chin on her hand and pouting. So do I. Before I have time to react, Saya reaches into my lunchbox, grabbing a piece of meat and throwing it at Shuichi, who ducks out of the way. My tuna! Saya reaches towards my lunchbox again, but I quickly snatch it away, holding it up in the air away from her. June then gets up and steals a piece from it. Thanks! Hey! Hey, don't you know it's disrespectful to waste food like this? Jinichiro's towering figure appears behind Sai and scolds her. S sorry Sai glares at Shuichi, who's on the edge of falling to the floor in a fit of laughter. And leave my food alone for crying out loud! I shoot an annoyed look at June. Hmm, it's really good. He's taunting me now. I relent, sighing. I'm glad you think so. Hey, let me try some too. I quickly whisk my lunchbox away as Shuichi reaches for it. Relax, I'm just kidding. Hey, by the way... June points his chopsticks at us, with his mouth so comically full of food that I can see his cheeks bulging. He takes a few long bites before swallowing. Did you guys see how they announced a new game for the Monster Tamer series? It's been over three years since the last one. Oh yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of that series. Yuichi hates it, though. Huh? Well, why would you hate Manta? Gee, thanks a lot, Yuichi. That dinosaur pushed me out of the mountain, okay? Dinosaur? Dinosaur? There are no dinosaurs in Monster Tamer. I still need to play Monster Hunter World. I've never played that. I think he's talking about the EBM Slitheros. He looks like a dinosaur. I jump from my chair in surprise. Ryoji walks up to us, still absentmindedly eating his sandwich. Oh yeah, that one! I've never successfully hunted him before! Saya leans over to June. What's an EBM? June opens his mouth to answer, but is quickly cut off by Kumagawa, who is now st staring intently at Saya. It stands for... It stands for Elite Boss Monster, but the main objectives in the Monster Tamer. You have to find them and study them and discover what they do and don't what they do and don't like so you can successfully tame them. Something us tamers affectionately call hunting. Yeah, that. I'm surprised you know all about this stuff, Junekun. I've never seen you carrying a portable a portable around. I used to I used to borrow my former roommate's console. It's one of the reasons I'm so sad about the new announcement, too. The new game is only for home consoles, so I can't easily borrow someone else's. Hey, I could let you borrow mine. I barely play it nowadays after I play most of the games that I like. And Aki doesn't like video games anyway. What kind of kid doesn't like video games? The weird kind. That's just the kind of kid Aki is. You only need to meet him once to realize which one is which one is the responsible brother. Hey! What? I'm just telling the truth. Yeah, well, you have very big hands. Sai tilts her head to the side in confusion. Dude, you need to work on your trash talk. Uchi gives me a tentative pat on the back as I, ha as I hang my head down in defeat. Well, Uchi-san, when can I go to your place to get it then? Why don't you come to my house after class? I can give it to you so you can take it home then. Uh, you might want to take it to do his house yourself. Shuichi chimes in. 
talking over a raised eyebrow. Why? Well... He shoots a glance at June, who just looks back and forth between the two of us with a curious look. I immediately get the message. Ah, you're right. Do not trust June with important cargo. Huh? He shoots us both a quizzical look that we, um, that we mostly ignore, pretending not to notice. Let's drop by my place and I'll, and I'll walk you to your house with the console. Why? You're just gonna have more trouble that way. It's no trouble, really. But... What are your plans for today? Both of our carts are still closed down until the end of the day. Courts are still closed down to the end of the day. So suppose you guys will have to do something else, right? Switchy, nice save! Oh, this conversation doesn't interest me anymore. Bye. <laughs> well, he sure is blunt. Well, I know Kaken has a court in his house. Maybe if I beg enough, he'll let me use it for practice anyway. Don't mooch off of your friends. It's not mooching. I'll help him with his practice also. Does that mean you'll, you'd play a match against him? Now, now, let's not be too hasty. You know that's what he'd want you to do. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Why don't you just... Why don't you want to play against keisuk -san? When I had almost forgotten that June was here, he suddenly chimes in. Well, it's just that. His playstyle is really annoying. Uh, playing against him is infuriating. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the idea. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if you actually had a basic grasp on any strategy other than bang ball really powerful on the other side. Okay, first of all, I don't like the sound of that. Second of all, shut up! You see, this is your problem. Urushihara is probably the player most similar to Tanabe in all of Japan. You should be getting as many matches with him as you can as you can try and practice against that specific type of player. And instead, you just bitch around about how annoying it is. Whoa, Shuichi, I thought we had agreed to be we would be gentle when confronted when we were confronting him on this. Oh, I am being gentle. I have quite a few choice expletives that I decided not to use on this occasion. Sam mumbles a wow under her breath, looking away from Shuichi. Well... What? No we response this time? Seriously, Yuichi. I know this bothers you, but you have to stop doing that. Every time something becomes remotely hard, you start looking for an excuse to run away. That's not true, I never run away from tennis. No, instead you just quit the high-profile club you used to practice in, rejected all the private coaching offers you received, cut ties with all your sponsors, and won't accept any requests from other high-ranking players to, to practice. Are you really happy just wasting away your talents in a second-rate tennis club when you know you could do better? Hey! Oh, shut up, it's true! Saya grumbles something under her breath, but the only were... But the only word of it I managed to catch is a curse word that I'm not too comfortable repeating. How long have you felt this way? For a long time already. Ever since you fell to the number two ranking and started doing this crap. Instead of doing your best to catch up, you're just lagging behind and letting other other rivals catch up to you. You used to be untouchable. Japan's rising star. The biggest hope for t Japanese tennis. And you lose a couple times to a really tough, tough rival and decide to shut yourself off? Look, I'm sorry if I'm being curt with you, but I've been holding a lot, a lot of this in for a while. I've tried being patient with you, hoping you'd find your way again, but you just keep repeating the same bullshit over and over again. I thought after that conversation we had a few weeks ago that you'd finally managed to start to change. I thought you were getting here after Morisaki showed up to practice with you, and you're here making excuses again. Look around the table. Saya's face, face is contorted in a complicated expression. June is a million miles away, looking off into the distance, perturbed by her sudden argument. Do you think so, too? I look Saya in the eye and ask her. She struggles to hold my gaze, eventually looking down at the floor. Yes. Coach has been trying to... Coach and I have been trying to motivate you since you first joined the school. We thought getting Morisaki and a few other low-ranking pros here over here would help motivate you, but and it seemed to have. You improved a lot in that week that he's been here. It's been years since I've seen you playing that way, but then as soon as they were gone, you just started doing the same thing again. So you knew Coach was going to do that. You planned it with him, and you pretended to be surprised by it. Yeah, kinda. I see... I put the lid back on my lunchbox and get up from the desk. Yuichi, wait! I just want to be alone right now, okay? I turn around and leave the classroom. No one follows me. The warm spring air is comfortable. A quiet breeze ruffles through my fur every now and again. I'm just sitting on the floor, looking up at the clouds as they pass by. Even though the sky is so clear, my mood right now is tempestuous. The sound of the door wakes me up from my daze. I guess I've been lost in the thought for a while. This can't be a teacher. The lunch break ended a few minutes ago. Everyone should be in their classes right now. Is Shuichi, then? I hear the sound of footsteps. No, it can't be Shuichi. He, he doesn't like to hide behind the vent. He'd have come straight here. Whoever it is, this person is wandering around as if looking for something. Ah! I instantly recognize that voice. I look to my side and I see June looking over at me with worry. He freezes in a spot for a couple seconds before finally taking a few slow steps towards me. What are you doing here? You should be in a class. I look away. Yeah, well, so should you. June sits down on the floor next to me, turning to look at the sky as I am doing. 
I don't really feel like going to class right now. I, I get the feeling that I just space out for the rest of the day. We sit in silence for a couple of minutes. I glance at June's profile every now and then, and see him with a complicated look on his face, struggling to find words. Eventually, he manages to find them. I, I don't really know what has been going on. I haven't known you guys that long. I get the feeling that that's not the kind of discussion you should have in front of an outsider like me. You're not an... <clears throat> but I am. But that's not what I came here to talk to you about. June sighs, staring at his feet with pursed lips. I don't even know what I want to talk to you about. I didn't really think this through. I just got the feeling that I needed to say something. I thought maybe you'd come to me when it would come to me when I saw you. Look at me. I'm rambling. Mm, sorry, Junkun. I'm not in a very good mood right now. Could you get to the point? Hey, I don't really understand the, the argument you guys were having, but it seems serious. I guess, I guess it just doesn't sit well with me. I can sort of understand. They basically said you you haven't been working your best lately, and I can see how that would be upsetting. But is it really that bad? I look over at June again, expecting to see a contemptuous look on his face. Instead, all I see is curiosity and worry. Damn it, he's too pure. I don't really talk about it much nowadays. But what Shuichi said is true. Up until middle school, I used to be known as the number one player in my age group. Even then, sports critics were already labeling me the next Japanese star. I had countless practice partners from all over the country. A multitude of coaches wanting to work with me. Tons of companies wanting to sponsor me. I had everything. I also had this particular rival, Takagi Tanabe. Back then, he was only in the sixth in the national rank. But he was climbing fast. We had met for the first time a year before when we played each other for the first time. It was a lopsided win for me, but when we met again in the next tournament, it wasn't as easy. I got the win, but it was as, but it was difficult, and I got really happy about it. All the other players in my age group weren't nearly in the same level as me, and that's a horrible thing to say, but it's true. I had gone undefeated for over four years. Eventually, I got in touch with Taka Takagi, and we started a friendly rivalry. Takagi from the south and Michimaya from the north. It was just like the sort of thing you'd seen a shonen man manga. You have no idea how happy I was. We talked to each other frequently, shared details about our training schedule, and eventually talked about our personal lives. He's my first tennis friend in a long time. What about Mizuguchi-san? Can't help but smile a bit. Saya's nice, but she's a girl. We don't play in the same category, so there's so there's no sense of rivalry between us. It's just not the same. Anyway, back then I got used to all the attention. I got used to being called and called the best, and eventually I led myself to believe the same. I thought I was the best player in Japan, and that no one could ever get in my way. During the U15 national tournament, in my second year, I got matched up with Takagi again. I think that was our fourth or fifth match. I don't quite remember. I was feeling a little bit nervous because every time I played against him, he seemed to be so much better than the previous time. I saw him clawing his way towards me, and frankly, that terrified me. But still, I convinced myself there was no way I could lose, and that that was that. I went to the match 100% sure I'd win. And? What do you think? I lost. I lost big time. It was down to the wire between us. We were already at a, we were already at a tie break in the end of the final set. The match had gone on for over four hours. We were both exhausted. I came first. I couldn't keep up the pace, and Takagi managed to steal the wind away from me. I was upset, but I convinced myself it was just a stroke of bad luck. Sports magazines, on the other hand, didn't seem to think so. A bunch of articles were printed out. I still remember the headline from one of them. Is this the end? Yuichi Michimaya finally beaten. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!